Let's talk with Brian Carmen. That's me. All right. We're going to be doing uh, Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15. I'm going to read it, then break it down. All right. As a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from every town, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed some seed, fell along the path. <clears throat> it was trampled on, and the birds of the sky devoured it. Other seed fell on the rock. When it grew up, it withered away, since it lacked moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up with it and choked it. Still other seed fell on good ground. When it grew up, it produced fruit a hundred times what was sown. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples asked him, What does this parable mean? So he said, the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to, for you to know, but to the rest it is in parables, so that looking they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. The seed along the path are those who have heard, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the seed on the rock are those who, when they hear, <clears throat> receive the word with joy, Having no root, these believe for a while and fall away in time of testing. As for the seed that fell among thorns, these are the ones who, when they have heard, go on their way and are choked with the worries, riches, and pleasures of life, and produce no mature fruit. But the seed that fell on good ground, these are the ones who, having heard the word with an honest and good heart, hold on to it, and by enduring, produce fruit. All right. The main argument that a lot of people, even Christians, have is, well, what about so-and-so? He claimed he was a Christian. He just fell away. You can you can lose your salvation. No, no, no. <laughs> you study the parable of the sower, it's telling you there are going to be people that claim to be Christian that never really were. So the first one in the description here is the seed that fell along the path, those are the ones that heard, and when the devil comes, it takes away the word from their heart so that it may not believe. So I can talk to somebody, hey John, Jesus loves you. I don't give a crap. And then boom, the, the seed is taken by, by the devil. That person doesn't even do anything. Then the next one, and the seed on the rock are those who when they receive the word with joy, having no root, these believe for a while and fall away in times of testing. So when they're tested, it proves that they weren't really in it. They weren't really adopted by God. They didn't have the Spirit of God come in them. It was more here than it was here. Or it's like joining Sam's Club. I thought they had the little card, you know. I'm going to get in. And as for the seed that fell among the thorns, these are the ones that when they heard... They go on their way and are choked with the worries, riches, pleasures of life and produce no mature fruit. So you've got those kinds. But then what does it say here in verse 15? But the seed in the good ground. These are the ones who having heard the word with what? An honest and good heart. That means the other Bible verse that I've talked about before is those who will worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. For these are the ones that God searches for, right? So, but the seed that fell on the good ground, remember the seed's gospel and the ground is the heart. These are the ones who, having heard the word with an honest and good heart, hold on to it by enduring and producing fruit. So there's going to be a change. There was a woman on Facebook claiming that she could live in, live in fornication because God knows her heart and God loves her. Okay, here's a couple problems with that. Yes, God knows our heart. And what does he say in the Bible? It's wicked. It's desperately wicked. And, and it's not trustworthy. Who can know the heart? Never trust your heart. Trust this. Trust God's word. <coughs> and then the, the other thing is, um, yeah, God, God loves you. But he also calls you to repent. And if you don't repent, you're not his. He that has the son has life. But the, those that don't has the wrath of God upon them. You gotta take this stuff serious, man. 
So many people are going to wake up and be shocked at judgment time. And even us Christians, we're going to be so shocked at how much we judged others. Oh, man. I say that the people that are wronging me, I'd hate to be them at their, at their judgment. But it's going to be rough enough on my own. So there's the plank and the, um, the splinter, right? Take the plank out of my eye and then take care of the splinter of my brother. Doesn't mean, you know, here's another thing about that. Don't, don't judge me. Well, yeah, we're supposed to. There's a judgment to hell, which God does. And there's discernment. And we are to make that kind of judgment. <coughs> if I see a person walk around with tot toting guns and knives and um, robbing a liquor store or hanging out with three women at once and all that, I'm going to make a choice, a judgment. I'm not going to hang around that dude. I'll, maybe I'll try to witness to him, but I'm not going to go, come on over for supper every Friday. Hey, and then join him in his activities. That's the main thing. So anyway, back to the parable. So uh, you can't lose your salvation. What did you do to gain it in the first place? <laughs> Nothing. Salvation is of the Lord, not just from him. So no, you can't lose your salvation. If you see Joe Schmo <coughs> claim that he was a follower of Christ, but now he's not doing it and he's totally turned away, not coming back. He didn't lose his salvation. He never was. And that's what the parable of the sower is all about. So anyway, and then I was reading that J.I. Packer. This is really cool. Would you drown your cares? Then go, plunge yourself into the Godhead's deepest sea. Be lost in his immensity, and you shall come forth as from a couch of rest, refreshed and invigorated. That was Charles H. Spurgeon, who wrote that when he was only 20 years old. So cool. Anyway, that was reading today, uh, Luke chapter 8, 4 through 15. Now i got to finish the chapter, but whenever I get something, I'll be in my bonnet. i I got to go. Remember, be in this word every day, even if you only read a chapter. I do the New Testament over and over and over and over and over again, because I do some other reading in, in the Old Testament. But at least do a chapter. At least do a chapter. Get into the Bible. All right, you guys. God bless.